So we had the awesome opportunity to be able to visit Cali, Colombia. Um, and it was a group of five of us because it was kind of like a scouting mission combo. Um, so we arrived in Cali and we had the opportunity to do um, about two services a day. We asked about the needs of the ministry and the pastor shared with us that um, a lot of inner healing was needed. Oh my God, Cali, Colombia. I can't even find the words um, to describe this trip and what has meant for me spiritually. Um, the pastors were amazing, their, their hospitality was out of this world. Just how open the people were, um, this being our first trip there, they were very open and um, careful of us and just very open hearted. The five of us, our comfort zones were presented to us. Minister Andre is scouting, Christian plays guitar. I work with kids every day. Minister Connie works with psychology and Mari Bell speaks Spanish. So our comfort zones were presented to us, but it was our challenge to say, Lord, use me however you want us to be used. We got there and we hit the, the ground running. We basically ministered to, to children the whole time. Um, there were some instances where we, we did some adults, but it was mainly focused on the kids and a lot of them didn't look like what they went through. Um, they were just so curious and so happy. One of the kids there, his name was Emmanuel, and he was like, you're my best friend. And they're exposed to a lot, a lot more than I think I've been exposed to, but they were still smiling and they're still kids, you know, um, but it's, it's kind of hard to see, you know, them being so tough. And there was a little girl that um, she got up in line to share what was on her paper. And I looked at her little face and she looked a little nervous. So she ran back to me, <laughs> next to me out of line and I said, you don't, you don't want to share anymore? She said, I said, do you want to share with me? She said, so like things like that, she shared with me what was on her paper and I was able to minister her individually and just remind her of her purpose, remind her of her work. I kind of have an idea that we were going to deal with children that has been abused sexually, physically, and also emotionally. Just to read that Oh, I will be happy if I can get uh, one meal a day. Or I will be happy if my cousin stop abusing me physically. And then we ask, what would you like to change? And, and that's when some of them spoke about the sexual abuse. And most of them experienced this at their homes. Something that my brother talks about a lot is just the hope that we saw because even even in the midst of the sorrow and the pain and the trauma and the abuse they had hope. That hope. So one of the children they, they're in there wanting to change something they said I don't like to see people sad. I want them to be happy. I want to help to change that. To, so to see the hearts of these children and to see how open they were to God and see how open they were um, for prayer, it was fantastic. Minister Andre preached an awesome message on Sunday about missions and the pastor got up and it still kind of gives me chills. He was like, God brought you here to leave a deposit of missions in our church. That is something that there is a desire to do. And for the Lord to allow Bishop and co-pastor and the ministry to send us on the field to leave a deposit, we're a missions sending center. So we had the opportunity to leave a deposit in another ministry that has the same desire. It was amazing. And Bishop told us on the pulpit when he prayed, he said, I want you to be a spark. And to know that the Lord allowed us to spark the love for missions and to make that deposit and now they have the anointing to go forth is just amazing. We got to end the trip with an awesome women's conference. Minister Connie minister about love. She spoke about the women in the Bible. When I translate, I pray and I ask the Holy Spirit to let me connect to the person that I'm translating for. In this case, it was easy because it's my sister. And we got the same mom and dad, spiritual mom and dad. And so I look around and I see face after face, they were just weeping. We had over 40 people give their life to him to open to receive it. We had many people come up for healing. We had people come up with prayers for a woman came up and said, you know, they're going to put me out of my house today. And we prayed and touched and agree. And we, I, we told her, tell your pastor the testimony so that we can know. Crystal Delray 
Um, it's really nice. The view is breathtaking. It's just, it's amazing. And the statue's huge. Um, it's very detailed. You could even see like his toes. Prior to going on this trip, I didn't realize that there were several kind of Christ the Redeemer like statues around the world. So um, the one in Rio is kind of overlooking water. This one is overlooking hills and mountains. So it's amazing to see God's creation from that. And just very thankful that, you know, Bishop and co-pastor um, basically granted us this opportunity. I thank God for the vision and the heart God has given to our spiritual parents, our Bishop Daniel Robertson Jr. and our co-pastor. The deposit was made and going forth as we continue to do that connection, I know that God's going to bring even more people to touch the lives of these children, of these people, and really fully embrace Kali Columbia.